Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia. So Tom Vassell, Mr. Tom Vassell, just came out with a video in his Designer's Best series talking about the best games from Bruno Catala, who happens to be my favorite designer. And so I figured I would make a little video talking about five games that Tom missed on his list. So you can think of this as kind of a companion piece to that list that he put together himself, which features 10 fantastic games. Well, here's another five that I think are just as good and uh, maybe you'll see some of these and, and be tempted to check them out if you have not done so yet. So, here we go. I'm not going to be ranking these in any specific order, so I'm going to go ahead and do all five alphabetically, and that means that Five Tribes is the first one. Five Tribes is a large game, larger than most games from Bruno Catala, and it is a resource management, sort of puzzly, Mancala-inspired in some ways, Euro game. And I love the idea of having to be careful about giving yourself a good turn while avoiding giving the next player in order a better turn than the one you just had because you changed the board state. The game has a really cool balancing mechanism when it comes to that. Some turns, there are simply better actions available than other turns, but you bid at the beginning of every round to decide who gets to go first on that layout. And that's a nice balancing mechanism. It's a great way to uh, to have a push and pull between giving up your victory points to take a turn earlier and gather more victory points from that turn. Very thinky. I really enjoy it. I think it's a fantastic game and it's one that's gotten quite a bit of acclaim. So you've probably heard of it already actually. And if not, definitely check it out. That is Five Tribes. My second pick is an oldie but a goodie and that is Jamaica. Jamaica is a pirate racing game. That's right, you are all pirates and you are racing around the island of Jamaica gathering loot along the way but also making sure you come back into port as quickly as you can because how far ahead in the race you are plus all of the gold you are carrying, well that's your final score. So you don't necessarily win coming in first but it's quite a boost. And throughout the race you're going to be firing upon one another so there's combat there with some dice rolling, you'll be finding some great treasure, sometimes not so great treasure, there are cursed treasures in the game, and you are managing your food supplies and your gunpowder supplies along the way. Certainly a family game, kind of a simultaneous selection uh, game, but it is by far one of the most attractive games in my collection, I think it's one of the most attractive games out there, and it is just a fantastic, rich, uh, engrossing uh, pirate, fantastical sort of adventure game. You know, it's it's just a wonderful family weight game. And if you haven't played it, I think you definitely should give it a try. If you enjoy sharing board games with your family and this is not one that's been on your radar before, wow, you really got to take a look at it. Just a beautiful game. One of my absolute favorites, Jamaica. My third pick is a deduction game, kind of, for two players. And now when I first heard about this concept, my mind was blown. How can you do that? How can you have a deduction game for two players? This is called Mr. Jack. And it spawned a whole line of games. And Mr. Jack, you have a character that represents Jack the Ripper, or one player who is Jack the Ripper, and the other player is trying to apprehend them. But that character of Jack the Ripper is hidden among a cast of characters, and the detective is attempting to dwindle down the suspects until they do spot who Jack the Ripper is while that player is trying to run out the clock and evade suspicion. Very interesting, extremely puzzly. This is a deep, deep game with a lot going on, characters with special powers, a lot of manipulation going on on the board, and just interesting and, and clever tricks you can pull out throughout the game to keep you one step ahead. Just a beautiful game, and like I said, there's a whole slew of these games now. You've got Mr. Jack, Mr. Jack in New York, which was a direct sequel to that, and there was a Mr. Jack Pocket, a much smaller, simpler version, but very tiny. And then there was one that was a spin-off with a, the theme of the Phantom of the Opera. There's been quite, quite a series of them. Pick any one you like, give it a go. It's a really deep and engaging game for two. 
My number four is a two-player card game which Katala co-designed with Bruno Fiduti, and I can't really fault Tom for not knowing this one. This is one that uh, does not have a lot of distribution out there. It's, it's kind of a hard-to-find game, and in fact, I have it here with me. It is called Tomahawk. And uh, Tomahawk here is, uh, like I said, a two-player kind of tug-of-war style game. You are going to be playing your characters on your side of different locations, plains and mountains, things like that, in order to wrest control from your opponent of that location and score the victory points that it is worth. It's got a very interesting and simple gameplay system, and one of my favorite things in it is that while there are a lot of these tug-of-war card games for two players, in this one, at the very beginning of the game, you are going to get a few special cards added to your starting deck that your opponent will not have, that are unique to you just for that game. And that's really clever. I like being able to have a few moments in a game, especially in a short game, in which you can pull out a nice trick and do something that your opponent was not expecting. Have a unique card just to you that you can go, ha-ha, you uh, and and surprise your opponent and, and and you know change the state of the game. Like I said, very short, very simple game. Definitely not as deep as pretty much every other game on the list, but I really enjoy it and it's well made and it's clever and and a breeze to play. So that is my fourth pick on the list here, Tomahawk. And finally, my fifth pick. And as I said, these have just been ranked alphabetically, and that game is Yamatai. Now, Yamatai was the follow-up, kind of, to Five Tribes. And by that, I mean it's from the same publisher, same designer, of course. And it's sort of a large, epic-scale, deep strategic game. Now, Yamatai has uh, just as much gorgeous artwork as Five Tribes. It has just as many clever mechanisms as Five Tribes. And it's sort of... Unfortunately, I think it's it kind of lives in the shadow of Five Tribes, but it uses all those ideas and many new ideas and sort of mixes them up again. You know, it's sort of like cooking a similar dish. Some of the similar ingredients are in there, but ultimately that dish is going to be very different. And I think Yamatai and Five Tribes are very different. In this one, you are deploying your ships around lots of islands, and then once that island has been surrounded by the necessary ships, you can build a location there. You can build one of your one of your houses there. And besides that, of course, just like in Five Tribes, you can hire characters to help you throughout the game, give you special actions. You are going to be, uh, you know, picking turn order, which comes tied to a power. Another very clever concept, which uh, is different from the bidding in Five Tribes. In fact, I like this better. So if you want to go earlier in the turn order, then you get a much lower power. You know, you get a, a, a power that is not as significant, and you can take a high number, do some amazing stuff, but next turn you'll go quite late in the turn. Really enjoy it, and as I said, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous game. Give it a try if you have not heard of it, or maybe heard that it was too similar to Five Tribes and you did not need to bother, bother with both. I think this one is... Uh, could certainly stand toe to toe with five tribes and not suffer from that comparison. So that's it for me. I hope you found at least one game here that was enjoyable to you. Again, check out Tom's video talking about his 10 favorite Katala games because this is just really a companion piece to that. And uh, with 15 good Bruno Katala games, you should have no shortage of fun. I'll see you next time. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.